In chapter 8, we're going to look at basic concepts of chemical bonding, and there are three types of bonds we're going to talk about. Uh, ionic is the first one. It's when you have a metal and a nonmetal. We've talked about this before, and we named these different kinds of compounds. So ionic compounds have ionic bonds. It's, you have a cation and an anion, and it really involves an electrostatic attraction between these ions. Covalent bonds are between nonmetals, and they're sharing electrons. And then we talked about how you can share them evenly or, or unevenly. And then metallic bonds are, when, are between metals. And so metallic bonding is it's a lot different than ionic and covalent bonding. We're going to consider metallic bonds in chapter 12. So now we can look at some Lewis structures. And Lewis structures are just a way to represent how many valence electrons any given element has. And so we can just review briefly some how to figure out how many valence electrons things have. Everything in group 1 has one valence ele electron. Everything in group 2 two valence electrons and then skip the transition metals we're not going to deal with those in this chapter then from boron down these guys have three four five six seven and eight valence electrons so depending on what family it's in that will tell you how many valence electrons that element will have so to represent the lewis structure all you're going to do is take the element symbol and then add however many um, valence electrons you have so lithium's in group one it has one dot there to represent one valence electron, beryllium has two, boron has three, carbon has four, and so on and so forth. So each one of those little dots represents an electron. And when, um, and when you're forming compounds, all these elements, most of the elements, like to obey the octet rule. And that's, that, that's the rule that atoms like to add or subtract, they like to gain or lose electrons, so that they're surrounded by eight valence electrons. So if we go back to our periodic table here, you can see everybody in group one has one valence electron. So let's look at lithium. Lithium has three electrons total, has one valence electron. If he gives up one electron, he'll have two electrons, just like helium. Sodium has 11. If he gives up one, he'll look just like neon, and that will make him really stable. So that's why everybody in group one likes to give up one electron. And if you look at the halogens, fluorine is just one electron away from looking like neon. So if fluorine gains one electron, then he will, ha he will look like neon. Chlorine, if he gains one electron, he'll look like argon. So everybody here likes to gain one electron. That's why when they form ionic compounds, they have a minus one charge. Everybody over here likes to give up one electron. So when they form ionic compounds, they have a plus one charge. Remember, these guys were plus one, plus two. And then we had like one, two, three, and then working backwards, minus one, minus two, minus three, and then carbon special. Carbon's right in the middle. It's he can either gain four electrons or he can lose four electrons. He doesn't do any of that. Instead, he shares electrons, and so he'll form covalent compounds instead of ionic compounds. So that's just a review of things we've already kind of looked at before. So let's more let's look more at ionic bonding. And so this is a picture of, of taking sodium, like solid sodium metal, and if you drop it in a container of chlorine gas, uh, you get this violent explosion. And then what you end up with is something that's really, really stable, sodium chloride, which is just salt. And so sodium by itself is kind of nasty. Chlorine gas is really nasty. But when you put it together, you get something that's so stable, you can eat it and it won't hurt you. We, we all eat salt probably every day. So what's happening in this process is sodium has one valence electron. So these are the Lewis symbols again. So sodium has one valence electron. Chlorine has seven. If sodium gives up one, he'll be happy. He'll satisfy the octet rule. If chlorine gains one electron, then he'll be happy and he'll satisfy the octet rule. So that's exactly what they do. Sodium gives up one electron. He loses an electron. He becomes an ion, right? So there's an ionization energy associated with that, if you remember that from chapter 7. So he gives up one electron, and then chlorine gains one electron. He's gaining electrons. That's electron affinity. He's capturing an electron. And there's a certain amount of energy associated with that as well. And then when you put them together, now this guy is, has a, is a positive ion, this one's a negative ion. Now they're going to be attracted to each other. So you also have to take into consideration the electrostatic attraction between these two ions. And you can do that by looking at Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law is over here. So if you've taken physics, you've probably seen this before. Um, this is the electrostatic energy, the electrostatic interaction here. Um, Q1 and Q2 are the charges. So for sodium chloride, Q1 would be would be plus one and q2 would be like minus one so it's a plus one and minus one um and then the d is the distance between them so d is the distance between them so if you have really small atoms they're going to have not a lot of distance between them and so they'll have a higher um, energy 
So if you if you um, decrease the bottom number here, the one on the on the denominator, then that's going to make um, the energy increase. So you get higher energies if you look at um, charges. So the bigger the charge, the higher the energy. I'm going to write this over here on the side. So the bigger the charge, whoops. Uh, okay, the bigger the charge, there we go, bigger charge, greater the energy, greater, greater the lattice energy. All right, and so the greater the charge. So look at the charges first. Charge is going to have a bigger effect than the distance between them. And so bigger charge, greater the, the lattice energy, and also the smaller the distance. Smaller the distance between them, which really has to do with the size of the atoms. So imagine you had like a little atom here and a little atom there. The distance between those two nuclei is really small, but if you had a bigger atom and a bigger one over there, the distance is going to be a lot bigger, which is going to give you a bigger D which you don't want. Um, so you're looking for small atoms and that have big charges. That's going to give you the highest lattice energy. And the lattice energy is the energy required to completely separate one mole of a solid ionic compound into its gas. So what that really means is it's talking about how stable the, um, the, the compound is. So lattice energy has to do with stability. So the higher the energy, the more stable it is. So if you look over here in this table, like lithium fluoride, those are two really tiny um, atoms, and they have a high lattice energy. You have a plus one charge and a minus one charge. Um, and then if you go over to something like, look at calcium oxide, it has a way bigger lattice energy because calcium has a plus two charge and um, the oxide ion has a minus two charge. So what we're going to do in this next example down here without looking at the table, so I'm going to cover up that table, without even looking at them, can we arrange these compounds in order of um, increasing lattice energy? So we'll look at sodium fluoride um, and CSICAO. So sodium has a plus one charge and the fluoride ion is minus one. So we're going to look at charges first. CS has a plus one charge, I has a minus one, and then calcium, here we have plus two, and O is 2 minus. And if you can't remember how to get these charges again, look at the periodic table. Everybody in group 1 is plus 1. Everybody here is group 2. So you can see we had lithium, sodium, and, uh, and cesium over here. And then oxygen had a minus 2, fluoride, chloride are, are minus 1. So going back over here. All right, so we're also going to have to look at the, the distances. So right away, oops, right away we know that that was a CA. I don't know what's going on here. So right away we know that the um, this guy is going to have the highest lattice energy because he has the, the biggest charges, plus 2 and minus 2. Um, when you look at your electrostatic energy again over here, a bigger number on top is going to have a, a bigger difference. So plus 2, minus 2, this is going to be, um, this should have the highest lattice energy. And now for the second highest, we're looking at the size of the atoms, and we're trying to find the smaller one. So we have to compare in this chart sodium and cesium. So going back to chapter 7, you can see that sodium is up here. So sodium is going to be about, uh, whoops, sodium is smaller than cesium is going to be bigger. And the same thing with um, the fluoride ion and iodide. All right, so if we think about what these really look like, sodium is smaller. And then CSI would be way bigger, right? And so this is the smaller distance, smaller distance, and so it's going to have a greater energy than the other one. So CAO is going to have the greatest energy, followed by NAF, and then CSI. Let's finish off this section just by reviewing again um, what kind of ions are formed. So if you think about strontium and you wrote the electron configuration for strontium, you have krypton 5s2. You could take a second to do the rest of these as well. Look at the electron configurations and then try to use that to help you figure out what the charges are going to be. Then we'll also have neon 3s2. 
3p4 and then neon 3s2 3p1. All right, so if we look at these on in the periodic table, strontium's in group two, right? He just wants to give up two electrons uh, and then he'll look like krypton. And then we had sulfur. He's close to argon. If he just gains two electrons, he can be like argon. Um, so sulfur is going to gain two electrons, so he'll have a minus two charge because electrons are negative. Strontium is going to give up two electrons, so he'll have a plus two charge. And aluminum is going to give up three electrons, so he'll have a plus three charge. And so the charges look like I'm going to give up, um, if I give up these two electrons, whoa, if I give up these two electrons, I get strontium two plus. This guy is going to add two electrons to look like the next noble gas over, so he'll have an S2 minus, and then this guy's going to get rid of these three electrons as well, and so you'll have aluminum 3 plus. So we learned all that in oh, chapter 2 maybe. Um, now it should make a little bit more sense when we think about the octet rule and how everyone's trying to look like a noble gas.